This is Project CB News, where the truth matters. Now we have to... Which one we ring it? But let's see. Woo! Hi, Jesse. How are you? Cool. That's Jesse. Hi, Jesse. Hello. How are you? Thanks for having us. No problem at all. Lead the way. Okay. So, uh, welcome to my humble abode. Thank you. You've got a lovely home. Thank you very much. Welcome to Project CB News. My name is Lindy Shavango. Yours truly indeed. Welcome to the fabulous 2023. And guess what? We kick starting the year with the young, dynamic author. We won't say his age, maybe he's too shy to say his age. But anyway, we are talking about him writing gazillion books. Uh, okay, maybe I'm exaggerating just a little bit. He'll tell us about how many books he's written, but we are here to engage with Jesse Peters. Jesse, welcome to Project CB News. Uh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be here. So, Jesse, tell us about yourself. Who is Jesse? Well, he's just uh, just another 19-year-old boy, currently fresh out of high school and just enjoying life at the moment. Enjoying life at the age of 19? I'd like to see that. What do you mean when you say enjoying life? You know, there's not that stress of um, waking up early in the morning, school, homework, peer pressure, you know, just taking in that moment of rest and doing what you want to do for, for, for once. Okay, I like that, doing what you want to do for once. Now take us back to your earliest, earliest childhood memories. What is it? Oh, well, um, if I have to think that far back, then I would say when I started having an interest in medieval toys and I, I got a set and two nights for my birthday and it was just so much fun playing with them and doing whatever I wanted and now I don't even know where they are. <laughs> Okay, so Jesse, let's take a step back. Um, who is that hardcore Jesse Peters? Take us through the journey of how you came to become an author. So take a step back, memory lane, how it happened, what happened in your life up to the time that you started writing your first book. Oh, well, it all started with uh, my godmother who, who she, she, um, she always read bedtime stories to me from a young age and, you know, it started, it was branded into my brain, that love for reading and stories and creativity. And also I had a very active imagination. You still do? I yeah, still do. <laughs> yeah, so it was never difficult for me to come up with fake scenarios for my toys and teddy bears and, you know, it was very easy. And, you know, those two, the uh, active imagination and the love for stories, they, they had a mutual friendship, you could say, and it, all went to grade four. That's when I started you know, reading more mature books and more fantasy related. So that imagination was very stimulated. And that's when I thought, you know, it would be really cool if I could write my own story. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, there's no limitations here right now. So what I did was I stole printing paper. Even, <laughs> after, even after my parents said, stop taking all the printing paper <laughs> yeah so i stapled those sheets of paper together and my first story was born and it was called 
Dinos versus Super Strikers, and it was a soccer story. Wow. So you had the one team, the Dinos, which was my team, and the Super Strikers, which I didn't actually know was an actual show. <laughs> so it was absolutely horrible looking back at it. <laughs> It was, so, I, I can't even read the first page, it was so cringy. <laughs> and yeah. I added even bad drawings in, so had these stickman figures with like over, out of proportion arms and a soccer ball the size of the hey, sun. Hey, be, be nice to yourself, this is great four. <laughs> yeah, but I should have known better. <laughs> okay. And it, it was... It's funny, but also extremely cringy because I was stealing characters from DC and from Enid Blyton's books and Marvel Studios, and it was all crammed into this story about soccer. But it, looking back, it was actually a very interesting idea. <laughs> all the superheroes, the defenders. <laughs> yeah. I can just imagine <laughs> who 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 kicked who's. Uh, but who won <laughs> at the end or was it about soccer? It was soccer, a mystery and superheroes. Oh my goodness. Yes, and in the end the, the Dinos did win the <laughs> soccer match. <laughs> How long did the soccer match take? Not 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Because no, they no. had to save the world, right? Yeah. <laughs> it took what, five days? I think about a week if I remember correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Where was the soccer match played? In, in, uh, on Earth or in space? It was played on Earth, but there was a moment where we did have to go to space to stop a meteor shower. So. Wow. <laughs> that sounds like an interesting book. It was interesting. <laughs> Cringy, but interesting. So you learned from that book. And then yes. what developed after that? What did you do with that book? Well, after that book, uh, my dad told me, you can't go stealing all of these other characters. And I went uh, more, more original. I still had the superheroes thing, but it was away from soccer, less characters from other books and creators and more of my own personal story. Uh, another mystery theme, but it was definitely a big step up from the first book. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think that's actually when I created my first original character, um, Philip Mason. He was based off of Jiminy Cricket. So okay. he, yes, he, he was my conscience. <laughs> so you're talking about your conscience. Um, why does that have to do or reflect on, on you personally? Were you going through something at the time? Oh, no, not really. I was still in grade four, so I don't oh. think I had any existential crises <laughs> at that time. But I think it had, it had more to do with, um, I love Walt Disney's movies. Mm. And Pinocchio was one of my favorites. And Jiminy Cricket, he just stuck out to me as a character. Okay. Yeah, and I based Philip off of him, gave... Um, but at that time, Philip was, he was still a placeholder. He didn't really have much emotional depth to him but it also it was a big achievement for me because i was like wow my first original <laughs> character not stealing any character no, not this time <laughs> but still in grade four yes, yes so what happened after that well after that i wrote a third book still printing paper but um <laughs> i can't even remember the name of the book it was that long ago, but I took these three books to my grade four and five English teacher and I, I don't know what I was expecting her to say, but I just said, man, I wrote these and I'd like for you to read them. And the response I got from her was not what I was expecting. The, when she gave them back to me at the end of the school week, she said, these are actually very good. And she didn't expect a... Uh, a child of my age to write such good books and I was genuine I was in heaven at that point <laughs> so who's this teacher that gave you the the moral support and the energy to go to go forward um, her name is ma'am Tegan and she was just yeah she was such a 
positive influence in my life. She is what she is what who pushed me to write and if it wasn't for I don't think we would be having this interview at all. <laughs> so yay, Ma'am Tegan, thank you so much. We love this. So after that she encouraged you to write more books and then you decided, okay, I'm going full force for this. I mean, you've written three books already. She's given you the inspiration. And now your parents are here saying, stop stealing the, 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 the paper. So what next? After that, um, that was when I started going more into the fantasy direction. Mm. Because, uh, you know, I was running out of ideas with superheroes and stuff. You know, at that age, you're not very good at creating superheroes of your own. So I um, started, like I said, with yeah. fantasy and that's also around the time where How to Train Your Dragon, the movie, came out and that is one of my absolute favorites so I thought, let's do dragons now. <laughs> okay, why dragons? They're just such amazing creatures and the story of How to Train Your Dragon was a beautiful story. Everything about the movie, the music, the you just felt, wow, this is absolutely amazing and I wanted to do something of my own with dragons so that was when I created Dragon Island oh wow yes this was when I actually played myself as a character oh okay yes so enter Jesse Peters <laughs> yes <laughs> into the whole scenario okay so you become a dragon yourself not or really what, um, happen? what, what happens well, Jesse was always a character from Dinos vs. Super Strikers, but in, in Dragon Island, that's I'm still human, and Philip also, he's still there, but it was away from the superheroes and now more about Jesse's character okay. and also dragons. So was it based on re still fantasy? Were you creating scenarios, fiction? Yes. Or were you just, yeah, you know, were you just living the real... Jesse's life. How, I mean, how does it pan out, pan out? I think it was, well, it was, um, both. yeah, it was both a mixture of who Jesse is and also who Jesse believes he is. Okay. Yes, how the world sees Jesse and how Jesse sees himself. Okay. And it, it was a cool story. I was, uh, I was riding dragons, playing with dragons, saving dragons. There were lots of dragons. Did they teach you to spit fire as well? Oh no, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> I mean, that's, that, that would have been a cool trick. It would have been a cool trick. Why didn't you teach it? Come on now, Jesse. I mean, there's still, there's still plenty of time to do it. <laughs> Go revise that book. <laughs> <laughs> so, fast forward now to from um, primary school because these are like the the young days to high school what happens so the leap of faith now you've got the confidence but I mean high school should have been a, a tough year I remember I, I remember clobbering a lot of people <laughs> in high school because you know people you know peers and, and teenagers can always can be so mean and they can be bullies and for me one thing I don't take nonsense so you said something mean about me or about my friend mm -hmm. behind mm -hmm. him, I'll go to you and I'll say, what did you say about me or what did you say about my friend? And if you were like starting to clap you across the face. But you don't come across as a person who can clap a person. You, you're a very gentle soul. So into high school, into the bullying years, the mean people, how did you deal with that? Well, my first year of high school was by far the worst year of high school um, on a personal level and just you know it's a whole new world and your parents are always saying you are in high school now <laughs> and you're just like come on now. <laughs> yeah no, it was also a totally new environment for me because most of my friends all went to public high schools and I went to a private school so I had to say goodbye to them I still keep in contact with a few of them but you know, it's like the first day of primary school all over again. Yeah. New world, new faces, and you standing there. It's orientation, so you looking ridiculous. 
and there's all of these people around you and you just stay like, hi guys. <laughs> and you have to make new friends from scratch. From scratch. And now you, you are young teenagers, so you're definitely more insecure and self-aware at that time. Mm -hmm. And well, the first day was good. I'll be honest, I made a couple of new friends, but private schools are something else, really. Because it's like if there's a hierarchy there. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so I made friends with these two guys who were geniuses, just like myself. And we clicked, but I think at that time I was oblivious to how their jokes were actually just making fun of me, teasing me because, you know, I'm not this guy from a public school and they've known each other since since grade six if I remember correctly and at that time I was also taking a break from the writing I can't remember why but I think I needed a change of pace and they never really took me seriously mm. and you know it just bubbled and well boiled and boiled and I'm just there pushing off the comments and the jokes and humiliation in front of teachers but you know, teachers at that time, they're just like, oh no, it's just a little joke. Yeah, and these are kids. They're kids just, being they're just kids. fooling around. And one day it snapped. And I ended up grabbing hold of my one friend who was the one making the jokes. The other one was just, you know, going with it. With the fly, yeah. Yeah, and um, I grabbed hold of him and I ended up tearing his blazer. Ooh. Yeah, and what do you do in that situation? You aren't going to tell the truth. <laughs> so I just lied about it. <laughs> and I expected, you said you would also lie about it and was water under the bridge. But he didn't. He didn't. And it was after my mother had returned the blazer to him saying that she couldn't fix it. And then his mother ended up phoning us back and then the whole story came out and I was the one looking like the, the bad guy. Wow. But yeah, we ended up getting sent to the principal's office and after that I was a complete outcast in the class because he was the popular guy. So you know how that goes. It's you, know, you bullied the popular guy. It's not the we don't care about the full story, we care about how it turned out. The perception, what mm -hmm. it looks like. Yes. And yeah, I just I was isolated from them and also not on good terms with my parents because we ended up going to the principal's office and the principal even said we could take it further and go to a school hearing but luckily we didn't and that's what um, got me back into the writing again that's actually how um, Fang was born because Fang Well we get to say thank you to the bullies! <laughs> <Yeah>. Woohoo! <laughs> because if it wasn't for them goading you and pushing you to that level, FAG would not have been published in 2022. Yeah, definitely not. So, I actually should say thank you to them. Yeah, absolutely. I must say thank you to them because I was able to get my goddaughter the first, very first copy and give it to her when I was in Cape Town to say, these are hot from the press. So enjoy, and it was autographed by you. So thank you so much for that. Uh, no problem at all. So how many books have you written in total? In total, over 20 books in my high school career. Wow, <laughs> yes. 20 books. Yes. And Fang is the one that we just talked about now. Yes. And that was launched in what, in October 2022? Um, or was it September? Fang actually came out at the beginning of 2022. Mm. Yes, and it's been going around. Last year, October, was when my second book was announced. Uh, the second book being? Um, I, Jesse, the Cyborg. I, Jesse, the Cyborg. Okay, let's take a break and let's talk about um, the, the very first one, Fang. How did that come about? We just know that the, we have to congratulate and celebrate the two bullies. Because there's always good out of that comes out out of the bad, and we always are, you know, very meticulous to get on our knees and be thankful and grateful 
for those bad opportunities because they give us experiences that we can leverage on. So how did that, how, how were you able to leverage on that experience? Well, at that time I developed a fascination and a, a small obsession, very small, very small, very small obsession <laughs> with, <laughs> with wolves. Um, they just amazed me and there's so many movies based off of wolves. Uh, the wolf itself is a symbol in many cultures and I just, I loved them so much. My wallpaper was a wolf, my profile picture. Even my TikTok name is I am the Lone Wolf, so you can see it's a very small obsession. Just a, a, just a small, small obsession. Now tell me, from dragons flying up high in the sky and blowing fire to wolves, I mean, that's a, a huge difference. Yes, it is. Uh, well, at during high school, I think I started seeing the world more realistically. Okay. So I thought, Let's go with wolves. And the uh, fang was actually on the fence for quite a long time because I, I wasn't really motivated to do it because at that time I was also working on a different book. And I wanted to finish that book first. And after the incident with uh, my friends, I thought, sure, I need to put this pen on paper. And I thought, okay, let's go with the wolf story. I added my own supernatural touch to it, you know, gotta have that, <laughs> that Absolutely. supernatural bit, or else it's going to be just a boring story. Yeah. And I wrote Fang, put in my own personal experiences and what I was going through at that time. Yes, Fang is actually based off a bit of myself, I'll admit, and I didn't expect that I would actually finish the story in the same year. Mm. I, th I only realized afterwards, I'm like, sure, I actually did this in the span of less than a year and it was a therapy session for myself. That's, that, that's absolutely amazing. It's incredible that you found an, an outlet because teenagers, um, you know, always go for substance abuse mm -hmm. or the negativity of, of this world. It's such joy it also cutest to your parents um, that you know you would um, come back it and, and, and do an introspection rather than go out and find something that is not of um, the family values mm -hmm. so cutest to your parents as well for that yeah yeah they they really played a big part in my writing career I wouldn't definitely wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them so that is um, fans, all about the wolves and all about us screaming and screeching. But um, that aside, tell us about this new book that is launching in 2023. We're talking about I Jesse the Cyborg. What's that about? Well, this is where I play my first um, concrete role as truly myself, as a cyborg, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm still facing both. I'm, I'm just making sure that we're not talking to, to a robot here. <laughs> yes, I got um, the idea for a cyborg from the Terminator, I'll admit. Because Terminator is a, a robot, cyborg actually. And also from Avengers Infinity War, Iron Man's suit was made entirely out of nanotechnology. So I thought, imagine a cyborg made out of nanotechnology. And my brain was like, let's do it. <laughs> and you did it. Yes. I just said the cyborg is set in the future. I'm 26 years old there. Oh, wow. In university and living with dorm mates. So we are a happy family, but at that time, Jess is also going through a bit of relationship trouble. Wow. Yes. And oh, did you meet a nice girl who's as clever as you? Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> okay, we like that part. Yes. And? And um, I'm caught in a car explosion. Wow. And that's what causes me to get sent to hospital. 
but the military ends up saving me and they make me the candidate of Project Cyborg. Oh my goodness, this is becoming deeper and deeper. So when are you going to be launching Jesse? Well, the Cyborg? Um, Jesse actually releases at the end of this month. January. January? Yeah. Wow. Where, where, where are you going to find it? Where are we going to find it? Are we going to find it through yourself or is it going to be at um, an outlet? It will be available at Bargain Books where you can order through the store or you can order IGC the Cyborg off of Amazon. And your other book, Fang, as well. Same, same. principle. Yes. This is just absolutely amazing. It is so incredible catching up with such a young person who is passionate about literature because for me I love reading reading for me it just takes me to another dimension and turning the pages of the book and making doggy ears on the <laughs> book that is for me the, the absolute ultimate I don't do the online reading no, 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 doesn't work for me so in, 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 in wrapping up um, the story and the writing history about Jesse. What would you like to say to aspirational people who are like your age and thinking, ah, oh, I want to write, but I can't write. I'm not good enough. And you know, they're going through a very morbid um, point in their lives at the moment. Or some who are just happy go like and say, I want to write, but I don't know where to start. I think it, it's, it all starts with um, what you are going through or what you want to write about. But you know, you, you need to crawl before you can learn how to walk. Mm. And the hardest part of being a writer is you end up compare, comparing yourself to other authors around the world. But remember, they also had to figure out the first sentence of the book. So the first thing is, you need to know what you want to write about. I mean, you can't just pick up a pen and think, okay, here we go. <laughs> it doesn't work like that, but yeah, I think you need to first get your ducks in a row. Don't want to sound too harsh, but that's where you need to start at the beginning and take what you are feeling and put it on paper, but it also depends what you want to write about. You can be a creative writer or you want to do autobiography and or documentary that kind yeah. of thing so you need to actually have a plan yes. in your mind and conceptualize what it is that you want to write about yes that's that's step one you need to know what you want to write about and literally anything can be inspiration for you a duck on, on the pond or <laughs> your youth letting a spoon fall anything can be inspiration and that's that's literally it and as the future what do you see happening for yourself well i this is definitely now more than just um, a hobby i'm actually going to i want to pursue Pursue, is that, that's, yes. pursue that's <laughs> a career in humanities and major in literature. Wow. Yes. And I would like to meet other famous authors, you know, 